Okay, so the machine began to play up a little bit. It kind of had a few um, like pauses while printing and uh, in, after investigating various things on the machine, I realized that the problem was the hotbed and uh, ignore these ones, I actually cut those but you can kind of see here the positive and ground wire uh, more so the positive had just worn itself out this originally was cable tied around the spring like that so in fact and the just wear and tear of moving uh, the bed back and forth eventually just buggered that up I guess that's a, a good thing if the hotbed stops working if the machine detects that the current is not being sent or I'm not sure if the thermistor isn't reaching the correct temperature this was stopping I really didn't want to deal with a broken 3d printer right now but it did so I had to I'm going to replace the broken wires with flexible silicon ones but beforehand I should check that the thermistor is still working the thermistor is the component on the hotbed that measures the temperature. The way you do this is by putting your voltmeter onto the ohm setting and placing the probes one on either prong or wherever they've been soldered. Okay, I wanted to visually look at the uh, thermistor as well. Um, so the way you check the, the thing is working is by checking the resistance I'm putting on the 20 ohm setting here and simply touching the contacts if the thermistor is broken you should get no change to your reading i also checked the thermistor on the nozzle hot end and that was 0.12 the reading from the thermistor on the heat bed was 0.11 the value changes depending on the temperature of the component so the problem was definitely the wire okay what i'm going to do is take the rest of this off give it a clean and replace it with a piece later that has a hole so i can see and access the thermistor if i need to okay i've cleaned this about as much as i dare i just had to use a bit of terps around here to get that off i'm going to make sure that's fully evaporated before you do anything else to it and you want to be very careful that you don't scratch the connections which i nearly did while that heats up, I'll just show you the wires. Hopefully that's long enough and it's really flexible. And part of the secret is, as compared to the wires here, the strands are quite thick. And this has many more thinner strands, which means it's a lot more flexible. And I think that's going to play a big part to preventing this from happening again. And then I've also got slightly thinner gauge wires. This is um, 24 AWG. I think this was 14. Just put the ducting here for the fumes. I gave up trying to unsolder the wires as the heat was dissipating into the bed and the solder wasn't getting hot enough. Instead I cut the wires back leaving a couple centimetres, tinned along the exposed metal and soldered new wires. I did them coming off at an angle as a plan to change the orientation of the bed to further reduce potential wire strain. Okay, I've recut the insulation and there's a little window just to keep an eye on the thermistor if I need to. I'm now reassembling the machine to test that everything works. It's good practice to check each time you make a change, otherwise if you make several changes and notice something afterwards, it becomes harder to identify which of those changes caused the effect. It's probably a good time to mention that I took the speaker out, the KC-1206, from this bit of circuit board here. The starting beep for this machine is so loud and uh, it's actually quite annoying. You know, I simply just snip these off, you can unsolder them and it doesn't seem to affect the machine. I didn't have and didn't want to wait for a drag chain so I used a bit of flexible trunking that I had lying around and cable tied the wires into position. I crimped boot ferrules at the end of the wires and tightened them into their terminals on the controller. Yeah, I've never noticed that before, but there's six terminals X, Y, two Zs and two extruders. Uh, but there's five 
drivers, I guess the reality is you're not going, you're not going to use both extruders at the same time. But the second Z-axis is actually one of the extruders. So this is a bit of the old way. You can really see like difference in flexibility. So I just need to connect the wires together for the thermistor now. So it looks like I can preheat now and I'm getting the reading from the bed temperature. I then tried to update the firmware using the download from the Anycubic website. You have to swap a jumper on the control board from DC to USB before doing this, but after following the instructions, the controller firmware version didn't seem to change. I really can't tell if this worked or not. Okay, while I wait for a reply from their customer services, I'm gonna make this a little bit more rigid. It's a very thin, punched out bit of metal and one way to do it is using some small aluminium box section. Essentially I'm going to fit it on the underside, but one in this position, and one in this position here, avoiding that limit switch. I mitered the end of the aluminium box section, so I had enough room to reach the height adjustment knurl knobs. And went about fitting the pieces to the 3D printer. I really should have taken the plates off the machine and worked elsewhere, but I didn't and instead held a vacuum close to where I was drilling to try and minimise any metal swarf coming off and ending up somewhere where it shouldn't. I then riveted the pieces together. There's still a bit of flexibility along here, but it's really rigid this way around and I don't think I can ask for much more than that going to drill these outer holes ever so slightly bigger. This will help prevent the threads coming off the hotbed from catching when it is raised. I've also decided to replace the fans and in particular the 60mm power supply unit fan, the 50mm controller fan and the 40mm hot end fan. What I'll do now is compare the sounds of the old fans with what I plan to replace them with. Okay, and I'll start with the 60 mil fan that's in the power supply unit. So that fan is going away. And I'm going to replace it with one of these Silent 6 ones. Although this is a free pin, so I'm going to have to rewire this. I think that's going to make a big difference. The other fan I was planning to replace was the control board fan, although this one is quite quiet. This is a 50 mil fan. And this is what it sounds like. I'm trying to replace that with one of these Silent 5 fans. Show you what this one sounds like, that's already still on there. So. I shit you not, that's how loud it is. The most noisiest fan is this one here. I decided to keep the radial fan as is as I couldn't find a good enough replacement which could push the same volume of air. Okay, before I put the heat shrink on I'm just going to check that I haven't made a mistake. That's really simple. And that's the fan for the power supply unit. If you don't feel confident opening up the power supply unit, you can just get a replacement. And I think meanwhile, I'm meant to be quite a decent and reasonable brand. So the this one doesn't actually have any arrows on it to indicate where the air goes, but it blows through this way. So, so just a word of warning, be careful uh, as the edges are quite sharp and then this just pops back in place so be careful you not know, touching too much stuff. 
I'm now swapping out the stock stepper drivers with TMC2208 ones, making sure to orientate these the correct way. If you're planning to do the same thing, after which you'll either need to swap the pins in the firmware or do as I did and physically pull the terminals out from the control board, rotate them and return the stepper motor cables. Okay, everything's back to front now. I then swapped out the panel mount for the power kettle lead. The old one had a tendency to make an electrical snapping noise as the machine was switched on. This one should hopefully be better and it also has a light in the switch. I now need to set the voltage reference for these stepper drivers. I set these to 0.85 volts as I've seen others do while installing the same drivers. Using the voltmeter I touch one probe end on the ground at the top right corner and where you can see a triangle of circles I place the second probe on the one closest to the enable pin. I then use a tiny screwdriver to adjust the potentiometer. Okay I've just replaced the heat sinks for these three stepper drivers with low profile ones just so the fan uh, can sit in place a little bit better. Uh, this fan is also a little bit deeper so the machine screws have to be changed. Had a weird uh, episode with the printer just now uh, where it was completely unresponsive and I was poking around inside trying to work out what was the problem and in the end I decided just to reflash the firmware and now it seems to be working again so flashing the firmware does seem to do something I'm not exactly sure what. I had noticed that there was a green light on the controller which had the words debug. Anyway it's on now I'm just heating up the bed and the nozzle just to get it up to temperature. Okay, I can't believe how quiet that was. Um, it was a little bit quick, felt like the speed was a bit higher. Hmm. Well, I mean, it wasn't even 100% in for, so it wasn't gonna work. Mm -hmm. 